Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the How to Craft Network channel. My name is Claire Manning from Thirsty Brush, and I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Hopefully, you've got nice sunshine today. I think it's forecast for today and tomorrow, the bank holiday. So very, very exciting. It's about time, isn't it? So I'm back with another crafty video for you today using our Thirsty Brush designs. So if you haven't uh, been here before, do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and then you will be told of all the videos that we upload. Do give us a thumbs up as well and that lets us know which kind of videos that you are enjoying. So today I'm going to be doing some stamping, some watercolouring and just putting a few different previous designs together for you. So if we have a look at which ones I'm going to use. The main feature of the card for today is the uh, Just Be You wreath stamp and die. So it's one of our really early uh, designs, but I thought it'd be nice to revisit some maybe no line watercolouring. Uh, so I'm going to stamp in a light ink. We're going to do some watercolour washes and then a bit of detail on there. You may have seen me do a similar technique on the last Create and Craft show with the Happy Hour collection. Uh, but because that's, we don't have too much time for the demonstrations, I thought we'd revisit that technique today um, and give you a little bit more insight into it while we've got a bit more time. So I'm going to start off by just stamping out that main wreath. So I'll just grab my Eureka. And just on a piece of white card, just so we can die cut it out and uh, watercolour. It isn't watercolour specific card that I'm using today, but of course you can do if you want just anything that's got a decent weight to it. So the main wreath here can be used any way up. I'm just going to pop it in the centre. And when I don't want the line to show up too much, I tend to use a lighter ink than a black or a grey or a brown or anything. Um, this is kind of like a yellowy orangey colour. I would probably use the next shade down on my cards at home. The reason I've gone for this one uh, is that it will show up enough on the camera for you. But go as light as you can because you will, the lighter you go, the more you will lose that line and all you will see is uh, your watercolouring and it will look like you've painted the whole image from scratch so I go really really light or even do a second generation stamp and use that one so just wipe that off so here's the main wreath and like I say I hope you can see that if I were to use a lighter one you really wouldn't see that at all um, so ahead of time I've started a little bit of watercolouring just because it takes a while to do the whole image. So all I've done is die cut it ready and I've started with a little bit of green on the leaves. So I'll grab my watercolour palette. I'm actually just using some water on directly on the palette and on my surface today. Just as a different, of course, you can have a pot of water, but sometimes if, say, you're traveling or you're working on a very small space and you've got a glass mat or the top of your Eureka even, uh, just to show that you don't have to have pots and pots of water. I'll just pop that aside. So I'm going around the leaves first and I'm just using a very, very basic wash of colour. So that means a fair amount of water on my brush and just a relatively small amount of paint. So I'm just going to do all the green while I'm here, which is all the leaf parts. I'm going to vary the green slightly. I've got a slightly brighter one mixed up here and then a slightly duller one where I've mixed it with some brown in this little bit. So. I'm just going to do some leaves brighter than the others and just give them all that wash. Don't worry about detail at this stage. All we're doing is adding a little bit of light colour and we'll go back in and do detail afterwards. 
And again, I'm not touching any of the flowers with this green, just the leaves. This wreath actually reminded me a little bit of um, one of the wreaths from Tony's release this week. The, uh, all the washi tapes with the animal. So if you do fancy having a bit of a go at the watercolouring, this is a way to, you could put those animals with this wreath that actually do a bit of the watercolouring yourself. So what I'm doing now is I've got slightly less water on my brush really fine point and where the little stems are going from the leaf leaves i'm just using a very light stroke just to join those up around the wreath still no detail at this stage i'm just adding in stems Okay, I'll just clean off my brush a bit on that water. And next I'm going in with some like a yellowy colour. I've got a slight bit of orange in there, but it's mainly yellow. And I'm going to go over the flowers and there's a couple of different types of flowers. This one reminded me of a bit of a buttercup. So I thought we'll go with the yellows. This one's a bit of a blossom type over this side. And again, just a little bit of water on the brush and a wash of colour. Don't forget, if you're looking to up your game a little bit with your watercolouring, add it more to your cards and learn some new watercolour skills. I've got my Craftopia class on. Um, Crate and Craft, you can buy the tickets through Crate and Craft and it goes out live on the 27th of June. So check out my social media or the Crate and Craft website and you can find all the details for that. And we'll be doing not just, uh, not watercolouring stamps, but actually creating a whole piece of floral art completely from scratch. So it might sound daunting, but don't worry, you just follow along. It's a kind of craft along, paint along class. And by the end of it, you will have something that you are super proud of. So that's the little yellow wash. And just one last bit there. Okay, so now we need to add some detail to that image. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more paint in these to make it a little bit more concentrated. So I'm going that green and brown again. That gives us a nice dull really kind of true green and hardly any water on my brush just dip straight in the paint and I'm using the very very tip of this this is a number one so you could probably use anything zero to about a three I think anything more than that might be too much and then let's start off with this larger leaf so you can see in more detail so I'm going right from the base of the leaf and I'm just going to do some flips And can you see where I bring it up? It's barely touching the paper at all. Can you see that gives a bit of depth? Dampen your brush when you need to, but really no, not much water at all. And then let's do the same on all the leaves going round. The smaller ones will obviously be a bit more delicate, but as soon as you get used to that stroke, just doing a tiny bit of detail. You will see that it starts to come together and starts to look more 3D, more real life, and it gives it depth of colour as well, because this is a darker shade than you've used on the base of the leaves. So I'm just moving the wreath round using the very tip of my brush. Pick up any stems that I missed earlier on. So 
the way you're doing the stems, you're just going over the stamped line. You don't have to be super accurate. It all kind of adds to the effect. Doesn't matter if you go out the line slightly, but it just gives that really kind of modern, natural watercolour look. Exactly the same technique on each leaf. And keeping it, if you see as I'm moving it around, if you keep it all or you flicks in the same direction, it just kind of adds to that flow of the wreath. The only one I'm doing slightly different is this one that's coming out from here. But all the rest are going in that direction. By the time you get round once as well, the previous layer will have dried. So if you need to go in and add a bit more depth, you can just whiz round again and add a bit more colour. I think that's okay for the green. Let's add some more depth now for those yellow, really orange flowers. So just clean my brush off. And in fact, I'm going to wipe off that bit of water and put a bit of fresh down because there's a lot of green paint now gone in that water on my surface um, and I don't want it to infiltrate on my yellow colours too much. So just a bit of water. Got the yellows. Add in a bit more paint if you don't feel it's concentrated enough. A bit of yellow and the orange together. Just the damp brush again, so this is exactly the same as what you've just done on the leaves. But this time, just pay attention to um, the direction of the petals. So this flower here, they all kind of come out from the centre. So that's how we're going to do our flicks. And you'll notice I always keep the direction of my hand and the flicks going in the same way and I move my work. It just stops you maybe putting your uh, hand over where you've just painted. A little bit of detail on those berries and then round to the next flower. These are those fine petal ones. couple of little buds here as well to add a bit of detail to and again we're just using the very very tip of this tiny brush takes a bit of getting used to that to have kind of a light hand with it if it's not something you've done much of before but once you've got it and you know the kind of height and um strength you need on your brush then you will just once you've got it you've got it Bit like riding a bike. So this flower here is on its side so I'm going up for this central petal and then you can see these ones come out from the edge there and you can use this technique on any kind of floral stamps that you've got. Okay so I think that's okay for the main image. You could keep going and keep going and add more depth. But the only thing I'll add in extra is just a slight bit of dark, a bit of a dark browny colour here, just to add to the centre of that flower, that really open one. And I'm just doing tiny little dots just for a bit of centre there. I mean that one. Just to give it a bit of focus, I think. So that's going to be the main focal point. And then actually in the stamp set, you get some extra floral elements. If I just hold this to show you, all stuck together. So you get the large wreath and the sm a smaller one if you wanted to use that. But you get all these extra bits, which are basically elements from within the wreath. So what I've done is stamp those out. I've done the basic wash. Some of them have got dyes. I've just cut round the others that haven't got the dyes. 
So I've done the basic wash and a tiny bit of detail. I'm just going to add more. And then I'm going to use them to embellish the, um, the wreath even more and make it even bigger. So I'm just doing the same technique that I did on the main one. And we need a bit of with the orange. I think I've added a bit on already. Just to add a little bit more depth on these few. And I'm going to try and tuck them behind if I can. Little buds there. And let's do some of that lovely green again. Need a bit more mixed up. To get a bit of detail on those leaves. I've done kind of two of each, really, of the, the ones that I thought would go well tucked in and around. I think this is one of those wreaths as well that you can colour up anyway with any colours and it will still look stunning. I've even done it as a Christmas wreath before um, because the flower, that buttercupy type flower is actually really similar to what they call a Christmas rose too. So it works well as both. Just a bit of centre in those flowers and then we'll start arranging this wreath. little dabs when I'm doing the centres. I'll miss some over here. There we go. Okay, let's just wipe that down. Quite a quick way of using your surface as well as your kind of water palette because uh, you haven't got like a cup to wash out or get rid of or anything, you just wipe it away. So I've got here one of Tony's beautiful grey top folding cards. I've got a piece of black just to give it a, a matte and layer as a frame. And I've kept the piece that it's going to mount on just white today. You could, of course, use another coloured piece. You could emboss this piece with your embossing folders or use a pattern piece of paper, stamp on it, whatever you want. But I want to keep it nice and clean and simple today. As we always do something in the background, I wanted to make the wreath the real focal point. So to add the wreath onto the card, I'm going to put some foam pads and you'll see why in a moment. It's going to help us build up uh, the depth of the wreath. So you can use the little sticky pads or a roll like I've got here. So just a couple of different bits just to make sure it's pretty even all the way around. And I'm going to pop it slap bang in the middle of the card. I've got a bit of watercolour on there. I'll have to cover that up. Normally a fingerprint or a splash of paint or something that I've managed to get where it shouldn't be. And if all else fails, what do we do? Add a sequin. So I did draw this wreath with this um, 
this flower at the bottom that's kind of half. So let's stick with that for now. But like I've shown you, you can use it anyway. Oh, look at that, and it covers it up well. <laughs> so all of these I want to arrange around the wreath. So you can see that they are elements of the wreath already that have been taken out. So I will try as far as I can to kind of mix it up. So I'm not putting things, I'm not going to do it decoupage, but of course you could, but try and kind of mix up the design. So the different elements are in different places. And of course you can shape them a little bit if you want. But we're just kind of building up that image and giving it even more impact. You can snip into it if you want, if there's a bit that you think too big for that area or overlap them like I've done there, whatever you want to do. Save the four flowers to last so they don't get kind of covered up. And there's two big ones. And two small ones that should just fill in the gaps. I feel. Maybe. Got a bit of wiggle room with the wet glue as well. So if you feel that something needs to move, you've got a bit of time. Could probably do with maybe one more item over there. Maybe let's move that. I think that's reasonably kind of even. But it's made it look much more impactful than it was before. Beautiful as it is, but you can just shows that you can add to it. So to finish it off, I've got from one of our uh, Enjoy Yourself uh, sentiment sets. This is Hugs and Kisses XOXO, and I've cut it out three times in black, and I'm going to heat embossing clear over the top just to make it shiny. So you've probably seen me do this before. I use the Luminosity Embossing Ink Pad. And I turn it over and I just press the die cut into the pad to make it all sticky. And then I use the clear embossing powder. This is the crystal clear one that comes in the not so basic set on the website. And I put that all over. Now this is where I need some tweezers and I'm pretty sure that I always forget to bring them. So do excuse my use my fingers. So at the moment that looks all like frosted with that clear powder, but it will melt and go super shiny. I'm gonna put the heat gun on it now. This is why tweezers are a, a good idea because you can keep it in place, but let's cheat and use my scissors very carefully so I don't burn my fingers. Just let the tool heat up a little bit. Whoop. See, it's blown it around. This is why tweezers are a good idea. And all that powder has gone super, super shiny. Leave that for a second or two just to cool before I stick it on so um, I don't um, smudge it or anything like that and get rid of all the, the shiny powder. And it'll set and then we just need to pop that on the card. So I'm just going to kind of layer it over. Just need a couple of blobs of glue there. So it's dry already and it makes it quite like a, a hard embellishment then. So if sometimes you find the uh, sentiment die cuts 
you know, anybody's sentiment die cuts, sometimes they can be a, a little bit fiddly. This certainly makes them more um, easier to handle. So I'm just going to layer that over the top. Give it a little press down. Sticking. <laughs> I think because I dropped it some of my glue from my pop an extra bit under there. And there we go. So clean and simple card, but actually loads of effort put into there with the all the watercolour in detail and like I say from a distance then you almost lose that line if you use an even paler um, ink pad than I have then you will lose that line even more okay Glad you enjoyed that, guys. I'm back on Thursday as usual at 1 p.m. Uh, every Sunday and every Thursday for me. But do subscribe so you can see all the other videos from Carly and Tony and Simon, all in between as well. And I should have some news on our Thirsty Brush Christmas release very soon as well, which is super exciting if I haven't told you about it already by the time this video comes out. But enjoy the sunshine, take care, and happy bank holiday. Bye.